Hey, Andrew, what's up? Hey, Dr. John, how are you doing? Partying, man. What are you up to? I am sitting in my car feeling nervous. Oh, that's good, man. It's good. I'm glad to have <laughs> you. What's up? Hey, so I um, just had a question about insecurity and how I build confidence and that whole realm. So I'll kind of give you some backstory and then maybe that'll help with my question here. So I, first of all, am a missionary kid who grew up overseas. Um, I live in the States now, but don't really feel like it's home. Um, it kind of feels like I don't really relate to a lot of things that people here want to talk about. Like people want to talk about the chiefs and I'm like, I could care less about the chiefs and that kind of stuff. How dare um, you, Andrew? I know. I know. <laughs> we worship at the church of Patrick Mahomes. I know exactly. <laughs> um, and then, so, so that's kind of, um, been a big part of just, my journey for the last, I've been in the States now for six years of just like trying to get used to living here and what that's like. And I also, when I, when I was around 13 or 14, started getting pretty, uh, moderate to severe acne. And I've been struggling that with that for probably the past 10 years or so. Okay. Um, and so that kind of just put another damper on my confidence growing up a lot. Like I just felt like I, felt like I kind of avoided eye contact with people for a lot of my life because you know, like I, I could see their eyes moving and yeah, feeling like dude. they were seeing my skin. Oh, and I, like, I did. I remember that. Yep. You yeah. see their eyes dart all over your face. Yeah, dude. Yep. Yeah. And so it just made me kind of just avoid wanting to look at people in the eyes because I didn't want to know if they saw my skin and right. like just, just kind of made me want to disappear. Yeah. Um, so I'm 24 now. I've been struggling with that for the past 10 years. It's kind of gone up and down. Um, so bringing you to now, I am getting married this summer. Congrats. And I really just want to feel like comfortable in my own skin standing there on the day of, and I really want to feel like I can be present. Um, I feel like I, I just struggle a lot right now with, uh, in social situations, feeling like I'm able to just be present and be with the people that I'm with. And I'm just always thinking internally and feel like, oh, I don't like, like, I don't like the way I look and I don't like the way, I guess I don't like the way that I feel. And I don't know. I, I, I want to, I want to be able to be present with people and just, I guess, not care so much what people think. Then stop outsourcing it, dude. Yeah. Does this uh, person you're marrying, do you believe that they love you? I do. Are you able to be yourself around them? Yes. Okay. I would say more so than most people. Okay. But you're still not fully there yet, and that's actually okay. Yeah. Okay? You're going to have to lean in and trust. But at some point, you're going to have to make the decision, and it's hard, that I'm going to stop outsourcing how I feel and my value and my worth and my attractiveness, both inside and outside, to everybody else. And let's just call a spade a spade. From one bad acne kid to another. It sucks, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sucks. And that eye contact thing you're talking about, dude, I got so good and that crossed over into paranoid. Yeah. Where I would track people's eyes real fast and make quick flash decisions. And to this day, I still mumble and I still avoid eye contact and I still kind of look people like, what? And I see them looking at me trying to figure out what I'm talking about. Right? Because I just kind of avoid and avoid and avoid. Right. And I'm work uh, now. I'm in a job that they everybody takes my picture all the time, and I'm on a camera right now. And I'm just I'm gonna stop living like that. My wife says she loves me. Fine. My kids <laughs> like me most of the time. Fine. Right. And I have a few close yeah. buddies that still make jokes about my skin from 
30 years ago. I, they're my friends. They're my closest friends. And I had bad skin. It, it's both true. And then I'm moving on with my life. And if you don't want to look at me in the eye, you don't want to see my face and you don't want to, fine. You get to choose that. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just going to let that be because here's the alternative. None of this worry, none of this diverting your eyes, none of this avoidance fixes my skin. It just reinforces in my body that I'm less than and I'm not good enough and I'm just going to try to disappear. And I'm not going to live like that anymore. Right? Yeah. I guess, I guess I don't know how to do that practically. Like, yeah, yeah. here's I the suckiest. I feel like I tried to tell myself that, but it doesn't work. No, it's the suckiest word I'm going to give you and I hate doing it. I hate telling you what I'm going to tell you. Okay. I just know it's okay. like, roll your eyes. I totally get it and all that, but it's, it's true. You're just going to have to practice it. You're going to have to practice being awkward and weird and holding people's eye contact. You're going to have to practice feeling uncomfortable and continuing to talk anyway. And if somebody chooses to not be in your presence because you used to have acne or you're 24 and you still do, then they're going to choose to miss out and they can choose to leave. But I'm not going to pre-leave for them. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And because you know what it's like to be looked at, I promise you, one of the reasons I'm good at my job sitting with hurting people is I know what it's like to be ashamed of what I look like. It's haunted me my whole life. And suddenly that became a superpower of sitting with hurting people. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're going to make good of this thing, but I'm going to practice holding eye contact. I'm going to practice holding my head up high. And there's also some choices you can make. I wonder if some of your angst is, I don't want to be the center of attention at my own wedding. Okay, then have a small one. Yeah. Right? I don't have to have 500 people there. Right. And if you don't want to talk about the Chiefs, don't roll your eyes and talk about the Chiefs. And then people are going to go, oh, that's so, can you believe that? And you're like, nope, I like to think about like clean water. <laughs> right? Yeah. I like to think about starving people. And I promise you in Kansas City, Missouri, you're going to find a group of people that that's their focus. They're quiet, but they're there, I promise you. But I think that your focus on other people talking about football is you looking for the wor in, in the world, scanning your environment for ways that you can opt out instead of finding groups of people that you can opt in with. Yeah. Don't use people's love of football as an excuse to like, yeah, and then I'm going to opt out. And then you just become a, a rageful, bitter opt out. See what I'm saying? Yeah. What are you good at? Uh, what am I good at? I'm good at sports, ironically. No, that's not ironic. What else are you good at? Um, I'm good at listening. Okay. What else are you good at? Um, I'm good at troubleshooting. Okay. Solving problems? Yeah. What do you do for a living? Uh, I do product support. So you hide behind a telephone? Um, uh, hiding behind emails, but even worse, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. As the dad of two young kids, I'm going to challenge you with how dare you hide the talent of being a good listener and how dare you hide the talent of being a great problem solver by sitting behind a computer screen. I need your heart, your compassionate heart, and your international ability to talk to different people in different situations and different settings and your ability to listen, which is one of the most... Um, scarce skills in the world today. Don't hide those from the, from my kids. The world's falling apart, dude. They need you. Fair? Yeah. And that's a mean challenge, I know. 
But you're, it, here's the bottom line: you're not going to get, you're not going to think your way into confidence. You're not going to chant yourself or vision board yourself into confidence. You're going to have to begin to practice things, and you're going to have to get good at things. And if you become somebody who's good at looking other people in the eye and hearing them and seeing them, and then if they're uncomfortable, they get to walk away. If you become good at that, you'll become more confident. And you'll realize when they walk away, you don't die, you don't disappear, you're not less than, you don't, your skills don't go away, your wife still loves you. Cool. That's how you build confidence. People say like, I want to be more confident in the gym. Okay, well, just lift weights then. Become good at the gym, right? I want to be more conf- confident at soccer. We'll get better at soccer. Put in the work. You just are going to have to become confident at showing up and greeting people and not trying to pre-hide from people. Does that make you feel uncomfortable even thinking about that? Yeah, I guess I, I guess I've been trying to solve the problem with the, the looks side of it. Of like, I've been trying to lift weights more recently. I went to see a doctor for my skin finally, and I don't know. Like, I guess I keep telling myself like, well, there's some problem. There's probably some guys that have great skin and have big muscles that are still really insecure inside. And so I'm like, well, at the end of the day, like, I don't know how much that solves the problem either of just trying to f- fix the physical side of things. And here's where, here's where you're fixing. Yes. You're going to actually address, um, acne scars. Cool. There's a lot of cool treatments for that out now. And anyone who's listening, that's a real thing. It's a real thing. And there's some cool treatments. Awesome. Lifting weights, yes, will make you feel more confident. It'll make you, you'll obviously make you stronger. It'll, it will um, change your posture, which changes your physiology, which changes your emotional regulation. All that stuff's true. But here's the bigger thing. It's, I don't know if you ever heard me talk about this, but here's the sucky thing about anxiety, angst, social angst is when your body gets anxious about a thing and for you, it's looking at people, it's being present, it's being seen. And you avoid being seen. It actually reinforces that inside your body because it it feels like it protected you from a threat, from a tiger. And your tiger is being seen, being mocked, being made fun of, being pointed out that you are less than because you have acne or you have acne scars now in your 20s. The only way to heal your body, your nervous system from that fear is to head straight towards the tiger, right into it. And so what you're doing by lifting weights, by going to the doctor, by putting this problem out on the table, this thing that's haunted you and saying, I'm not running from it anymore. That is teaching your body that, oh, dude, I can go through this. So yes, there's, there's muscles and there's a reduction in, in scars and things like that, but there's an inner strength. Yeah, come what may, come what the marriage problem that I'm going to have, we're just going to put on the table, I'm going to deal with it. We have a baby, I'm going to put that on the table, we're going to deal with that. We have marriage issues after, baby. I'm going to put that on the table. I'm going to deal with that. You see what I'm saying? That's where confidence begins. I can come, I can overcome anything. I don't even like who I see in the mirror. And I didn't run from that anymore. I headed straight into that. And cool. I made peace with myself. And you've probably heard this old adage. The crazy thing about worrying what people think about you is that they're too busy worrying about what you think about them. Yeah. Nobody's thinking about us. Or they may look at you and go, man, that guy's got bad acne. And then they're on to the next thing, right? And those that can't get it out of their head, dude, you don't, they're not worth your time anyway. And so I, I, it's go straight towards your, your pain and go straight towards the discomfort and straight towards the, ah, it's exposure. That's, the, that's where healing is. It's on the other side of that. And it's living in that reality. Yeah, I got acne. Yeah, I got bad scars. Yes, I'm embarrassed about the way I look. And I'm not going to be embarrassed anymore about me, about my character, about who I am, about my looks. I'm going to head straight into it. And if you want to opt out, opt out. I'm not pre-opting out for you. It's not my job to make sure you don't see something that looks less attractive today. It's not my job. And stop looking for ways to opt out of social situations in the world. Look for ways to opt in. 
and you're going to find that you don't die. People start to welcome you and they need you. You got a great skill set and you're, you got a gift. Whew. That's where confidence comes from. It's awesome, man. I'm proud of you. Congratulations on getting married. Call anytime and I'll walk alongside you. But I want you to practice feeling that discomfort and sticking with it. Stay in it with people. Lean towards that discomfort. Feel it. And if it gets too overwhelming, then call somebody. But I think you're pretty resilient. I think you're going to be uh, pretty strong. And if it gets real heavy, you can ask, ask your wife. I look good. Yep. I look great. Cool. Your vote matters. All these other people, they don't get a vote. It's awesome, my brother. I wish you the absolute best in your new marriage, man. Go Chiefs. Even if you're not, <laughs> even if you're not rooting for them. Hey, I'm proud of you, brother. 